Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery to talk about pruning. So I had a um, YouTube fan come in the nursery and ask me if I could do a little video on how to prune. So I'm thinking, okay, on what plant? And she says, oh, just in general. So I thought about it and I thought, okay, what, we'll, what I'll do is, is I'll take some of the very common things that we have in our yards and talk about how to prune them back. Um, we're coming out of winter, going into spring here pretty soon. So we've got a lot of winter yuckiness looking things going on. And so this is a good time to prune back some of that stuff and encourage some new growth for the spring and the summer. So what I'm gonna start with is just as very simple, this is what we call deadheading. So deadheading just means we're taking off the dead flower heads. So as you can see in this plant here, it's got some buds and it's got some dead flowers on it. So he's looking pretty good. I'll come in here and take out some of these dead leaves, just kind of pluck them out. There's a dead branch in here. So I'll go ahead and take that right down to the stem where it's coming out of the plant. And then on these ones that are done flowering, there's you could usually tell between the buds and between the ones that are done. So what you'll do is you'll come down to where there is a leaf or two on this particular one and then you can pinch it, we call pinching, or you can actually take your pruners and prune it that way as well. So this is not gonna take very long. This one's in pretty good shape. So we're just gonna get rid of some of these dead things in here, some of the dead leaves. We could pull those out. Anything that's dead in the bottom of the pot, if it's in a pot or in the ground, you want to remove any of those dead leaves around the base of the plant as well. If there's any kind of insects or bugs, they hang out in those dead leaves. So you want to get rid of those. So any, any buds that have turned brown, you can take those off. And then I've got just like these little stems here that are the, the flower has fallen off and we just got these little stems sticking out. So I'm gonna prune those down into where the leaves are again. So generally, if you make your trim above a set of leaves, you're pretty safe. It's kind of like with the roses, same thing. If you find you wanna make your cuts right above where a rose, where the, the flowers or the stems come out of the plant. And that, at the base of every leaf, there are latent buds that are ready to come out. So if you make a cut above that, that little bud area, that's going to encourage the growth to go. Because you think about it, these are the energies going, it's like a freeway. And it's going up the branches into the stems like a freeway. And if that freeway has got a, a, a bridge that's broken, then the energy goes up there and really has no place to go. So it's wasted. So if we get rid of those broken bridges, and cut them back a little bit, then the energy can go where the plant can, can utilize it and send on new buds. So we pretty much got this one now. All we got left is just buds. And here pretty soon, these are gonna start leafing or uh, opening up and we'll have some nice pretty flowers. So that's, that's one thing. Now this next one I'm gonna show, this one is a pentis. And pentis or Egyptian star flowers, as you can tell, do not like the winter look here. This is, this is definitely a winter look. And so I'm gonna start by peeling off these leaves that are dead. Now, if you can, hopefully you can see, there's a lot of buds coming up at the base of each one of these leaves. So we're going to encourage that growth. So what I'm gonna do now, is these are dead so again we're going to deadhead and i you can kind of see there's a little union right there right here that's where i'm going to make my cut because the new stuff's coming out and you can go about a quarter of an inch from where it's coming out of the plant and just snip it so i got rid of that so now this one here the growth is coming out right here so i'm going to just snip that right there I'm going to leave some of these leaves on here. Now, the plants need to have some leaves to, to perform photosynthesis, which is how they use light. They convert light into sugars and carbohydrates, and that's how they grow. So if there's no leaves, they're not doing that part of the photosynthesis. They're not getting the light, and they're not converting the sugars and the carbohydrates. So they just kind of sit stagnant, which is why when plants go dormant, 
they just kind of sit there now a lot of times their roots are still growing and spreading but um, when they're dormant they're not growing a whole lot just the roots you don't see it under the ground so now here's another one there's a little there's a joint right here the leaf is pretty small but yeah I might go ahead and do it up here and let these guys grow any leaves that are damaged I'm just gonna peel them off and I'm gonna take this one down into here give it a nice cut this one down into here take off that funky leaf this one there take off these little funky leaves so now he's kind of paired back to next to nothing here but here in the next week when it gets nice and warm I'm gonna take that dead flower off these guys will start taking off. Now, once it gets nice and full, I can go back in here and take out anything that doesn't look good and start to shape it. So there you go. Not, not a whole lot to really look at on this one, but it's cleaned up and ready to go for this season. Now, a lot of us have lantanas in our yards, and this is kind of the look the lantana has in the wintertime, especially if we've been having a lot of rain and this one here has just got some damage on top of it. Lantanas are pretty amazing. You can whack those back really far. Now this one here, I'm just going to take the dead stuff out of here. So again, I'm going to cut it down to where it comes out, where there's leaves. Same thing here. So this one's pretty easy. I don't need to do a whole lot of snipping on that. There's a few little dead things I'm going to take out of here. And that one is pretty quick. So that was a quickie. So that one's pretty much done real fast. And now this one, he's kind of looking a lot more ugly. He's kind of stringy, not very good shaped. So this one, I'm going to I'm going to cut this one back fairly severely. He also has a little bit of bacterial leaf spot. And if you can see that on there, bacterial leaf spot. That comes from overhead watering or sometimes just the dew settling on the plant will cause that as well. Um, most of the time if you can water with um, a drip system on lantana you're better off because that way it's not getting moisture on the foliage um, the the trailing variety this one here the lavender there's a white and there's a yellow the trailing varieties multividensis those do not get the leaf spot so the other hybrids that are bush forms those those get leaf spot Okay, now I'm looking for anything that's dead. I'm just going to take those off. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to trim this down into the main structure of the plant. So we're going to go just above where it branches off, and anywhere along the stem where there's little buds or where the leaves used to be, you can make a cut right above it. And that's going to this one is broken, so we're going to take that off. This one we're going to cut down in a little ways, and I can see at the base of these buds, I can see where new little guys are going to grow. So I can cut those right above there, and that energy is going to go right to those new little buds. Now I'm going to go ahead and come on down here, give this a little snippy in there, and let's see. Yeah, I'm going to take that off and kind of, kind of look for a shape in here. I like to like draw a pretend line and if they cross across over that pretend line they get a snip and then that's where you're trying to find the the where the leaves were coming out and making your cut right above that where it's at now if you make a mistake as long as you don't cut it right above the root ball and cut the whole thing off it, it'll grow back now rule of thumb if you don't know there we go pretty small back to where it was if you don't know where to cut or how much to cut don't do more than a third at a time so for example I got this one here now this is to me I call this a wild hair he's got all these looks like he's got like he just got out of bed and his hair is all sticking up so I like to um, on the begonias and patients um, these guys have a tendency to get wild hairs I like to call them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to, my line is right about here. I want to get rid of all this stuff here and make it a nice little mound. So again, we're going to look for some areas now right here. If I make my cut right here, this is going to get the energy. I'm still going to have some flowers. So I'm good with that. And you can see here, we just got these stems sticking up here. I'm going to make my cuts there and I'm going to, well, that one broke off. So that worked for me perfectly. It was a good place to break it. And this one here, same thing. 
This one here, there's a little, there's a little com plant coming up right here. I'm going to make my cut above that. Now I'm not worried about these flowers because there's lots of flowers still on here. Now if you do this as it happens, usually as it's growing, what it'll do is it'll have one or two little wild hairs. So if you go in and get your wild hairs, as you see them, you know, lick it and stick it, um, you won't have the stems hanging out. But this one here is lending itself pretty good to me cutting it back and still having some flowers down in here. It's ready to go. It's ready to start flowering and growing for this next season. So I'm gonna go ahead, yeah, here's, yeah, again. See, we, we've got some flowers coming off here, some stems. So it's real easy for me to cut it right there. Another one's coming off here, so I'm gonna cut it right there. I think I'm pro, well, no, I'm gonna cut that there because look, it's sticking out on the side. So that's, that's my OCD, folks. I wanna get rid of that. So there's one that's cutting right here, so I'll cut that off there. And then there's a little node right here, so I'll cut a rub but of that. And so now, look, he's got a nice little, he's looking like he's not so, he's a little more put together. And he will, now I'll give him a little fertilizer in about a week or two as it gets warmer. It's still kind of cold. We're supposed to get cold this next week. Down into the 30s, folks, if you believe it. But, um, and be careful when it does get cold, if we get a frost, you're going to need to cover your tender stuff. So this guy then is ready to go. You can give it a little bit of fertilizer and he will just pop and grow real fast. Now, and here's the impatience, same kind of thing. See the wild hairs? So impatience, this is a New Guinea impatience or a sun impatience. And I'm gonna again, just draw that line. I'm not too worried. Also on those begonias, if we have some nice little cuttings, here, this, here's one. We can actually take this right here and I can put this into the soil up to there and a good chance, keep it moist, it's gonna grow a new plant. So you can take these little wild hairs and put them, sometimes you can just stick them right down into the pot. I would cut off the flowers, get the flowers off of there so it's not trying to put energy into flowering. And then you could just stick it down into the soil. Now I'll have a begonia in with my impatient if I want to. So just as simple as that. So again, you can do that with these guys too. A lot of times if you, you can just stick them down in the ground as well and you'll get more plants. Same with um, geraniums. That's another one you can do that with. So these ones here, I'm just going to find, yeah, there's another little growth right there. I can take that off. I think I'm going to leave that there to give me kind of a pinnacle in the middle. I think I'm okay. I'm going to take this one back to here. So, oops, I can take that out of there. And then anything that is dead, I'll want to remove out of here. Any dead branches. There's one here that's no leaves on, so I'm going to take that off. So now we got it nice and evened out. And again, a little bit of fertilizer, and this guy is going to take off and look good fairly quickly. Now another one that is good with that is the geranium. This is an uh, zonal geranium. This is an upright variety. And as you can see, he's beautiful, but he could look even more beautifuler. We can make him look even more pretty. So I'm taking out anything that's dead right now. I'm gonna deadhead anything that is not growing. So those are these are pretty easy. They 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 the flower comes right out at the base of the plant. So it's easy just to kind of break that off. Get anything that's dead out of here. Um, any old leaves, you could just kind of pull those off. Geraniums are pretty easy to deal with. Okay, yeah, all right. So now I'm gonna draw my imaginary line and I'm going to shape this baby up. Now this again is another one that you can take cuttings. And as you can see here, I've got some new growth coming off of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that there. There again, some wild hairs. So, and I can see where there used to be leaves and there's a little one coming off there. So I think I'm gonna cut right there. This one, I may go ahead and leave until, no, I'm not going to, because I don't want it to be hanging out there. So there's a little cutting right there. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take this one here, right there. Now again, let's, uh, we're going to do some cuttings on these. So I'm gonna just take 
I'm going to cut in the middle because I'm going to put, I want this to go into the soil. That's where my roots are going to come out. At the base of the leaves are also roots, not only buds, but also root nodes. And then I'm just going to take this kind of bald side over here and I'm going to poke that down into the soil. Just as easy as that. No, no problems there. It's pretty easy. So I can actually fill in this pot with some of these, these cuttings. Again, take the flowers off. You want them to concentrate on leafing out and forming roots. So see, I've already made it look fuller on this one side. So you're not wasting anything. I think I'm gonna leave that. Okay, this one's hanging out all weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and take him down a little bit further. And <clears throat> this one, he's got quite a few leaves and things and flowers. I'm gonna leave that there. Going to take off some of these dead. There's another dead flower. We'll cut that off. And hey, he's not looking too bad now. See, we got rid of some of those crazy wild hairs. And again, you can let this grow out. And if you decide that you want to cut out some more stuff, that's one thing. You know, if you, you let if you cut it back about a third and then you let it grow out, then you can cut it back a little more. And then you let it grow out and cut it back a little more until finally you get it down to where you want it to be. And it's pretty simple. So there you go, quick snip snip. And we got some nice cuttings in the front to make it look fuller as it grows. And that's that, simple, simple. Okay, so now also we have a lot of hedge type plants. And that's, this is, this is a Wheeler's Dwarf Pittosporum. As you can see, he has got some wild hairs. So I am going to go ahead and I can cut right down into the, the because if, when I cut it, these, these leaves are gonna cover that cut. So there's a few little branches branching out. I'm gonna make the cut above that. And for this one, same thing. There's a branch here, branch there. That's a little too far out. So I'm gonna make my cut right there. Boom, look at that. Nice and simple. Very easy to take care of these. It's the same kind of concept for pretty much all of these. Cutting above a leaf. All right, so lots of us have azaleas. Now usually you don't want to prune an azalea until after it's flowered, because right now I do have a lot of buds on the tips here. Um, but let's say you got a party coming and you got lots of flowers down here. And then these look like somebody forgot to do something with this plant. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Again, I'm looking for growth above the, where the leaf is. And I'm taking it down into the plant so you don't see these little stems that make it look like somebody just came along and butchered your plant. So it's, we're just going to get rid of, I might leave that one. Sometimes, you know, it's better to not cut it and come back and look at it than it is for you to cut it and then go oops i shouldn't have done that now it's going to look funky but it will grow back that's the fun thing about doing this is that plants do grow back and they kind of cover our mistakes as you can see here i got a bud coming there so i'm just going to make both of those cuts right there boom i'm going to cut that off cut that off and might go ahead and come down in here and so it depends on you know you might want to enjoy that you can leave it on if you want and then when it's done flowering you can cut it when they're done flowering azaleas you can cut them pretty good in fact I had a couple that um, my husband accidentally spilt some weed killer at the base of and I thought uh oh he's gonna die so I whacked him way back I mean this thing was this big and I whacked him to this and I thought, okay, well, I'll plant something else there. Yay, yay, I could put something else there. And it grew back. <laughs> so now I'm stuck with that stupid azalea. But anyway, <laughs> oh, that's okay. I like the plants anyway. But anyway, as you can see, there we go. Now we got a nice little hedge looking plant again. All right, the other thing that we run into is this is a bird of paradise. Now, bird of paradise is you have to be careful where you cut these. If you cut these stems in the wrong place, you are going to cut off your new growth and or your flowers. So there is, I don't know if you can get in and see this, 
there is, as you can see coming out of the stem, that is a new, either a leaf or it could be a flower, this little guy. And you can see it's coming out of this leaf. Now if you were to come in here and cut this leaf down here, guess what? You're going to cut off your flower. So as you can see, these, this branch is not looking too good. There, I call it a belly button. There is like this little spot on each, each leaf that looks kind of like a belly button. I always make my cut above that belly button just to be safe. Now what will happen is it will go ahead and grow out <clears throat> and it will start to die like, like, like this branch here you can see is dying. So it's not going to have anything coming out of it. So I can go ahead and take that all the way down to the base. And this one here is not going to have anything coming out of it because it's already come out up here. So I can take that one all the way down to the base. So the ones that you know are not going to have something coming out of the middle of it. So obviously I'm not going to cut right there because there's a new one coming out of there, right there. This one is broken, so I'm going to go ahead and st stick to that rule above the belly button and cut it there. And this one is, yeah, it could have something coming out, so I'm going to keep that. This one, same thing. No, well, you know, you could have a flower coming out, so I'm going to do that. Cut it there, same with this one. So now we pretty much got this guy shaped up, got some of the dead stuff out. Now you can, if you want, you can give these a cut just to get rid of the, get rid of the brown, and then when it finally goes then you can cut it off but these will eventually turn brown and then at that point you're safe to go ahead and take them off at the base the same thing applies to a calla lily same thing with this one this one has new growth as you can see coming out of the base of the plant right here so if you were to cut this stem right here obviously you'd cut off your your, your uh, leaf and you also might cut off a flower. The flowers come out of, this has got that same kind of a belly button look right there. Right there where my pinky's at. That's kind of that belly button that I was talking about. And that's want to make your cut. Now see, we've already done that here. And we'll wait for these to turn brown. Once they've turned brown, you can peel them off a lot of times. But that way you know, see this, you kind of peel that off. That way you know there's nothing going to come out of here. It's safe to go ahead and cut it off because it's already coming out of these other spots. So that's just a quick, this one's kind of dying, so I'm going to take it up there because something could potentially come out of there. But there you go. Then that's nice and easy, done and done. Now I do have, a lot of us have heavenly bamboos. And on this one, these guys, I've had our gardeners come through every so every now and again and just whack the heck out of these. And they are very whackable. So this one's not doing anything. I'm gonna go ahead and whack him at the base. Boom. This one here is ugly and he's got some stuff coming here. So I'm gonna whack him right above where that stuff is. Bam. So this one has a little some dead branches right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And let's see, this branch right here is bad, so I'm going to attempt to cut that out. Now I might need a lopper for this. Let's see how strong I am. Yep, I'm strong. Okay, got that out too. So now you can see, oh, this one too. This one is dead, nothing on it, so I'm going to take that right down at the base. Now what's nice about Nandina is they will go ahead and sprout, they, they'll sprout at the base. And they do reseed, so sometimes you'll get some of them growing up from seeds. Take off any of these dead sticks off of here, any dead branches that might be in here. You can just kind of peel off. They come off pretty easy. If they don't, you just give them a cut. And there you go, Nandinas. So that's nice and cleaned off. So then we have the other thing that we have a lot of, and that's salvias. And salvias look really good all summer long and they're blooming and the butterflies and the hummingbirds are coming and they're enjoying them but after the winter time they look a little tired as you can see these ones here are a little tired now what I like to look for on these is the new growth at the base see all that new growth that's coming at the base 
that is a sign to you that you can really whack this guy back. So what I'm going to do on this one is I am going to just whack it. Again, you can see where the leaves are coming out. You can see where it's going to have growth above where the leaves were. And you're just going to make about a quarter of an inch cut above that. Um, yeah, I got some new leaves coming out there. Um, this one here. Yeah, I'm going to go all the way down to here because I got some really nice new, leaf, new leaves right there coming out. This one I can take off at the base. This one. Yeah, I could. I'm going to come into here. It's still going to leave a little flower on there. We cut that off there. Cut that there. Cut this all the way at the base. Any dead stuff that's in here, we can remove. Any big, any little stiff stems, then sticks that are just sticking up with nothing on them, we can go ahead and cut those off. And doesn't look like much right now, but I tell you what, in about one month, this baby is going to be going off again. So there you go. Simple, simple. All right, and then we have this one is a Mexican sage. And as you can see, it's got lots of new growth coming out the base. So I want to get any of this woody junk out of here. It's not going to go anywhere. It is dead. So I'm going to cut it out. Cut that one out. Cut out any stems that are not doing anything. Now, there's no free, there's no free loaders on this one. We're going to get rid of anything that is not doing what we want it to. So we get another one. There's a big seed. It's all dead. So we get all this dead junk out of here and the energy will then go to the live parts and make it look, it'll grow out a lot faster. And this is kind of a nice little rejuvenation for the plant. You know, you, you, you get to kind of start all over again. You don't have to replant a new one. You just get to, to shape up the old one. Now, now that I've got it to kind of the bare bones, I'm gonna come through and take out the really tall ones this one here even though it's got a flower on it sometimes you have to sacrifice some flowers or you can wait till it's done flowering and then come back in and prune it at that point it really doesn't matter um, sometimes you know I have a hard time cutting them if there's a flower on there too but since this is a demo I'm just being brutal okay there you go simple simple again and we're done so you just on salvias you just want to look for that new growth that's coming out from the base and that's kind of your sign now also keep in mind the temperature again like I said tomorrow or this week we're supposed to dip down into the 30s at night which is kind of weird but that's okay we'll take it um, you may not want to do this until you know for sure usually March is a good time to go ahead and, and start trimming them back um, yeah, I might even take this one out because it's not as fresh as these other ones. Now everybody's going to be nice and fresh, all the same kind of height. So it's use use um, use discretion. You know, again, it's better to do less and then come back and redo it again than it is to do too much and possibly kill the plant. So again, no more than a third at a time. If you don't really know what to do, don't do more than a third. Then let it grow out. You could do a little more and then let it grow out and then do it until you finally get it down to where you want it to. Doing a lot of pruning from in the springtime is good because the plants are already stimulated to grow. They want to grow. They're going to get new growth on them, new flowers, etc., etc. So it's a good time to give them a nice cut back and let them regrow for the spring summer. All right, if you like this, please click like, hit the subscription button. If you have not subscribed to our channel, hit the bell if you want to know when we got a new one. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.